Young boy finishes first in long distance running, but he shed tears of sadness. All he wanted was third place, because the only prize for third place was a pair of sneakers. He didn't do it for himself, but for his sister. His sister's only shoes were in a state of disrepair. The family is poor and has to repair them again and again. The freshly repaired shoes are on the shelf. Jack was about to choose some potatoes, but the old man mistook them for rubbish. He threw them in the rubbish truck. Jack was about to leave when he realized he had lost his shoes, and then he fumbled around desperately and accidentally knocked over the shelves. The owner grabbed a broom and sent him away with a fury. He felt so guilty about losing his sister's shoes. When he returned home, he blamed himself and explained everything to his sister. His sister Elsa was devastated. They were her only shoes. Jack didn't want his parents to worry, so he told his sister not to tell her parents. He would get them back. He returns to the food stall again. Once again, the owner kicked him out. But what about school tomorrow? The teacher won't let me wear slippers. And so, with one word to the other, the two of them wrote a full page on the board. Jack came up with a solution. Because they had staggered school hours, so they decided to take turns sharing a pair of shoes. Elsa wore her brother's big sneakers to gym class. She always ducked back deliberately until one of the students fell down. The teacher asked everyone to wear sneakers in PE. Only then did Elsa smile. In order not to miss her brother's school, she hurriedly finished her exam paper, turned in her paper early, and left. She dashes back to school, but her big sneakers didn't hang on her feet. She accidentally dropped her sneakers into the river ditch. The flowing water rushes her shoes forward. Aisha chases after her anxiously, but she couldn't catch the shoe. Suddenly the shoe is swept under a rock by the dry grass, but Elsa couldn't reach them. She fell to her knees and cried in anxiety. Luckily, an old man passed by and helped her catch it. Jack, who had been waiting at the end of the lane, seeing the wet shoes, in his anxiety, he said something to his sister. She said that she had tried very hard, but the shoe was too big and had accidentally fallen into the water. But her brother still blamed her. Aisha was in tears and said that if this happened again, she would tell her father. It was her brother who had lost her shoes. Jack argued with his sister for a few moments. He put on his shoes and ran to school. Even though he was going as fast as he could, he still missed his class. The headmaster caught him. Jack told a little lie to get by. Finally, it was time for school to end. He saw his sister who was still angry. He took out his shiny new pencil and gave it to her. Only then did his sister smile. Where did Jack get the money to buy the pencils? It turned out that Jack had come first in his maths exams. The new pencil was his reward. That day at the morning assembly at school, Elsa had been looking down at her classmates' shoes. There were new ones and old ones. There were pink and red ones. Whatever they were, they at least fit. Only on her own feet. She was wearing a pair of big slipper-like sneakers. Suddenly she spotted a pair of shoes that looked very familiar. Aisha tried hard to make sure they were her lost shoes. Had this girl taken her shoes? The girl and her brother take turns wearing a pair of shoes to school. It was like a big slipper. This day, she found her classmate wearing her pink shoes. She followed the girl after school. She followed her until she walked in the door, and thus wasted a lot of time. By the time her brother arrived at school in his shoes, Jack was still, not surprisingly, late. He watched carefully for any sign of the headmaster. He confirmed it and hurried up the stairs. He met up with the headmaster. This time, no matter how much Jack tried to explain, the headmaster still let him leave the school. Jack's tears were flowing down his face, but it didn't help. He had to walk towards the door in frustration. He ran into the maths teacher. The teacher and the headmaster tried to explain. Jack was a very good student. He was a very motivated boy. In the end, the headmaster forgave Jack for the teacher's sake. Jack is forgiven for now. After school, Elsa and Jack went to find the girl together. It looked like they were going to get their shoes back, but when they arrived, they found that the girl's father was blind. The mother was wearing an old pair of slippers. The two siblings just looked at each other. They seemed to have reached a consensus. Then they turned around and walked back without a word. Although they would share the same pair of shoes for the rest of their lives, but the kindness in their hearts made them feel that the girl needed those shoes more than anything else. The hardship continued day by day to ease the hardship. At the weekend, his father took Jack to the city to earn some extra money. Looking at all the tall buildings and the flow of cars, Jack's heart was filled with envy. Soon the two arrived at the villa. 
His father rang the doorbell when a voice came from inside. Father was too nervous to speak, not to mention selling his gardening skills. He was even frightened by the large dog that kept barking and running away. When the father came to the second house, he was even more nervous and unable to speak. It was Jack who clearly described their gardening services, even though he didn't need it but it was a good enough start. The two men then went from house to house, but after half the day had passed, still not a single sale. Jack was thirsty and came to the side of the road for a drink of water. But to his surprise, a young boy's voice came over the walkie-talkie. A young boy's voice came over the intercom behind him. Jack goes up to him and asks if he needs a gardening service, but all the boy wanted was for Jack to play with him. He didn't care what Jack had to say. Jack didn't say much either. He was about to leave with his father. But suddenly the boy's voice came up behind him, and an old man dressed in silk. And so began the first business. The father was pruning and tending to the flowers. Jack and the boy were having a great time. That's how childhood should be. After half a day's work, the father finally finished his job. The old man paid his father a small sum of money. It's a year's worth of food for the family. On the way back, father and Jack envisioned a life as a gardener. They would be able to buy a washing machine for the family, so mother wouldn't have to work so hard. And Jack never forgot to buy his sister a new pair of shoes. Father was all for it. But the unexpected always comes out of nowhere. The two of them came to a speeding slope, but the brakes failed. The father stretches out his foot and rubs it on the ground. It only had a weak effect. And then, they crashed straight into a tree. The car broke down. Both men were injured too. They had to take the train home. The money they'd just gotten paid for their medical bills. The landlord came back to collect the rent. The family was still in dire straits. The two siblings continued to take turns wearing a pair of shoes every day. The streets and alleys are filled with the two of them dashing about. The school announces a running competition. Students are encouraged to take part. When Jack heard the news, looked at his shoes and gave up because there was only one pair of shoes. If he went to the race, how would his sister get to school? Soon the school announced the participants. The prize for third place was a pair of sneakers. Jack was instantly intrigued. He approached the PE teacher. The teacher told him that entries were closed, but Jack kept begging and pleading. The PE teacher had a soft heart and decided to let him try out for the first time. To his surprise, Jack's performance caught the PE teacher's eye. And so Jack ran the 5K in his worn out sneakers. He ran a 5K race. The city's best runners came out to participate. Jack was drowned in the crowd slowly pulling away. He kept on running and kept on running. When he felt tired, he thinks of his sister running to school and the sound of siblings arguing over shoes to get his sister to wear her new shoes. Once again, he'd pick up his spirit. He fought to overtake each of the runners. Until then he found himself at the front of the pack, but he couldn't finish first. All he wanted was his shoes, so he slows down and returns to third place. At that moment, a child on the sidelines deliberately bumped into him, not caring about the pain. Jack quickly got up and sprinted forward. He was desperate for his sister's shoes, but the result was not what he expected. He was awarded the trophy. The headmaster and teachers took pictures with him, but Jack shed tears of sadness. But he couldn't get the shoes for his sister. He hadn't kept his promise to his sister. He was filled with guilt. Back home, Aisha saw the disappointment in her brother's eyes. Without saying a word, she understood everything. Jack took off his running sneakers. His mood was as rotten and bad as the shoes. His blistered feet slipped into the cold water. At this point in his life, it seemed that only a small fish could cure his bad mood. But what he doesn't know is that, on the back of his father's bike, two pairs of brand new shoes were ready to go. This seemed to be a sign that the family's life will get better and better. Little Shoes is a film released in 1997. The film does not deliberately amplify the sadness, but the film is all about kindness and running. Jack running to find his his lost shoes. Jack and Elsa take turns wearing a pair of shoes to school. Elsa running to retrieve a shoe that has fallen into the water. Jack running to give Elsa a new pencil. Jack and his father running to earn money for their work. In the end, Jack runs to win a pair of sneakers for Elsa. The two siblings kept running hard. The sound of their rapid footsteps beats on everyone's heart. Running with one foot to make a better and better life.